We're going to go over the verses basically and a little bit of the meaning of Al Imran. Al Imran is a great surah. It talks about so many, so many things. It has a lot of uh, um, great virtues in it. So, if you know, as, as we know, we're in Ramadan, so we have to kind of understand the Quran better. Having an understanding of the Quran is amazing as a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast and accept our fasting. Allahumma ameen. So we start off with the beginning of the surah by reciting the verse and then talking about the meaning in English and so on, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alif Lam Mim That's the first verse of Al Imran and Alif Lam Mim as we all have heard before are verses that have been mentioned in the Quran many times and while some people say it does not have any meaning to it a lot of ulama and scholars say, yeah, they do. They have a lot of meanings to, the, to it. And the meaning to Alif Lam Mim is basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging those who read Quran and know the Arabic language, the Arabic language. As we know, Arabic language is a deep language. It's not a, it's not a soft language. It has a lot of strong meanings in them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used those letters, Alif Lam Mim, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ayn, Saad, Qaf, Noon. So many letters were used to um, to speak this language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in this, this Quran. He spoke this Quran to us. And Allah has challenged us saying, Okay, this Quran is made out of Alif, Lam, and Meem. The next verse of Surah Ali Imran is Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum Allah, there is no God, there is no deity, there is no Lord worthy of being worshipped except Him, alone, with no partners. He is the ever-living and the all-sustaining. He is the ever-living and the all-sustaining. So He is the one that gives sustenance and He will never die. Allah, the greatest, will never die. He is the only deity worthy of being worshipped. You said the first letter, you said, sound like Hebrew. Alif, Lam, Mim. Hebrew is derived and very related to the Arabic language. A lot of the words in Hebrew are very, very similar to the Arabic language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that apparent and made that very, um, uh, you know, very shown in the, in the Quran and the uh, other uh, books that was revealed to the prophets, as in the Jibreel and the, uh, the Torah, I mean the, yeah, the, uh, the Torah and the Bible. The next surah, the next ayah, the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِينَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in this verse and says, He has revealed to you, O Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, the book in truth, which is the Qur'an, confirming what came before it as he revealed the Torah and the Gospel the Torah and the Injil okay so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this to us he's saying he has given you this book the Quran and while confirming the Torah and the Injil the Torah and the Bible now we have to realize something we're talking about the original Torah and the original Bible. So when we come to a debate and we're talking about, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
he's confirming the Torah. Of course he's confirming the Torah and the Bible. Obviously. Because Allah sent the Torah and the Bible. The Torah and the Injil. And he also confirms with this following verse. Where he says, مِن قَبْلُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَأَنزَلَ الْفُرْقَانِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ ذُو انْتِقَامٌ Allah says previously, and this is following the previous verse, as a guide for the people, and also revealed the standard to distinguish between the right and the wrong. Surely those who reject Allah's revelations will suffer a severe torment. For Allah is the Almighty, capable of punishment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, He is also capable of punishment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows us or gives us the, this following verse saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Surely nothing on this earth or in the heavens is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. Nothing in your heart or in your mind or in your tongue or anything. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَوِّرُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ He is the one who shapes you in the wombs of your mothers as he wills. So our looks, our shape, the way that, that we, we come out of our mother's wombs, this is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. This is the works of the greatest. This is the works of our Creator. The Almighty, the All Wise. He did it on purpose. When we start saying, why did Allah do this to me? Why did Allah give me this nose, this eye, this mouth, this, these ears? How come Allah gave me this hair? How come Allah is get, gave me this and that? We have to realize, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. Allah is the most wise and that's why he did it this way. The other day I was far, I just started following this one brother, mashallah, and I was really, really touched by his story. He was born without the capability of hearing. He wasn't able to hear. The, the canal in his ear was not connected. But, subhanAllah, with the miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, He's able to hear. The doctors don't know why. The doctors don't know how. But he was able to hear, subhanAllah. Inshallah, if I had the, the opportunity, I will share one of his stories from his, um, from his channel. Amazing brother. Allah chose to give him that type of life for wisdom that he has. But I think it made that brother very strong. It made him very strong. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next ayah, it's a longer ayah, so bear with me. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Allah says in this verse, and this is verse number 7, 
He is the one who has revealed to you, O Prophet of Allah, the book, the Quran, of which some verses are precise. They are the foundation of the book. Why others are elusive. Those with deviant hearts follow the elusive verses, seeking to spread doubt through their false interpretations. But none grasps their full meaning except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one knows their intentions except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for those well grounded in knowledge, they say, we believe in this Quran. It is all from our Lord, but none will be mindful of this except people of reason. As I said, we're only reading the recitation or we are reciting this, these verses from Surah Al-Imran and we are reciting also the meaning of this in English. We're not going into a tafsir or anything like that because I'm not a scholar, so I'm not going into tafsir, but I am sharing with, with you the meanings of this um, surah, because I think it's very important that when you read the Quran, you also know the meaning of the Quran. Not only memorize it or just know it by heart or whatever. So we go into ayah number eight. Allah says, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً they say, Our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. Who say that? Those who say that are the people that Allah SWT mentioned in the previous ayah. وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Those of understanding only remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا They say, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Ameen. And grant us your mercy. Ameen. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. This is a great supplication for us as Muslims. When we are supplicating and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, we can use this verse as a supplication. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةٍ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ The next one is also a supplication. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us another supplication. So we have this, um, su this guideline, this guidance of making dua and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ جَامِعُ النَّاسِ لِيَوْمِ اللَّهَ رَيْبَ فِيهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِيعَادِ This is another supplication that we have to use. When we don't know what to say, what to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, use this supplication. Use the one before it. The Quran has many supplications for us to um, use so that way when we feel stranded, when we feel down, when we feel... You know, we need something to say to Allah SWT and ask Allah SWT for something, then we use these supplications. This supplication, which is verse 9 in Surah Al Imran, Allah SWT says, Our Lord, for us to say our Lord, and this also indicates that those people of understanding in the previous verses supplicate to Allah SWT. They say, Our Lord, you will certainly gather all humanity of the promised day, or to the promised day. 
about which there is no doubt. Surely Allah does not break His promise. Allah does not break His promise. So those two, those two supplications come together. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد This is important guys This is important for us For me and everybody else who's listening or watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break a promise. And he promised that if you supplicate to him, he will give you. If you ask him for something, he will give you. He promised that. And Allah will never break his promise. Now we go into the next page of Surah Ali Imran, which is um, verse number 10. Allah the Most High says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَن تُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ وَقُودُ النَّارِ Indeed, neither the wealth nor the children of the disbelievers will be of any benefit to them against Allah. And they will be the fuel for the fire, for the hellfire. Let's think about this just a little bit. We see those non-believers, the kuffar, the mushrikun. We see them, we see how they're doing, how they live in their life. Some of them are very wealthy. Some of them have a lot of family, children and, and children and friends and all that but do you think those those children or that wealth will help them anywhere in front of eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they don't use it according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or according to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us indeed neither their wealth that money that they have, or that gold that they have, or that wealth and the properties, and all that power that they have. Neither that, nor their, ch their children, will help them or benefit them in front of the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, they will be the fewer to the hellfire. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from the hellfire. Allahumma ameen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an example. He gives us an example of those who were non-believers before us. Allah says, كَدَأْبِ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Their fate will be like that of the people of Pharaoh and those before them. They, will re they all rejected our signs, the signs of Allah. So Allah sees them for their sins. And Allah is severe in punishment. So Allah tells us that the children nor the wealth will help you against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the two things that people are working very hard, very hard to gain in this world. Money and family. And some people, they don't care about having, you know, family, family like, you know, like brothers, sisters, sons or daughters or whatever. They care about having people around them. Like Pharaoh, Allah SWT gave us the example of Pharaoh right away in ayah verse number 11. Allah says, And the fate 
of those non-believers is similar to the fate of Pharaoh and his people, those who came before us. Who do you know on the face of this earth in the history got more wealth than Pharaoh? Pharaoh got so much wealth, or the Pharaohs in general, they got so much wealth, it's unbelievable. So, did that wealth ever help them against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. No, it wasn't even close to helping them. Allah, Allah says here, they all rejected our signs. They rejected, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned all the signs that he sent to the pharaohs by Moses, peace be upon him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they rejected those signs. So Allah sees them for their sins. فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ He sees them for their sins and Allah is severe in punishment. Allah is severe in punishment. He is he is merciful. He is the Rahman, Ar Rahman, but he is also severe in punishment. You go against Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you will get punished. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to keep us away from the punishment of Allah and to grant us His mercy in this dunya and the akhirah. Allahumma amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to tell the disbelievers, or you who disbelieve. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَتُغْلَبُونَ وَتُحْشَرُونَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ O Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the Prophet here, and he's also speaking to those who read the Qur'an. And believe in the Quran. Tell the disbelievers, soon you will be overpowered by Allah, the Most High, and driven to hell. What an evil place to rest. And that's something that we don't realize, that hell and heaven are the resting place after we die. We die we're going to go into an eternity life, an eternal life. And this eternal life is either heaven or hell, one of those two. It starts from the grave, start getting the, the signs of it from the grave until you get to the judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then with ayyadu billah, could be hell. For the kuffar is hell for sure. For the Muslim, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is heaven. It's eternal. It's forever and ever. So we need to work very hard. We need to work very hard to get to that Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us and the ones that we love Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Allah gives us another verse that has to do something with the previous verses. And this is the beauty of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects things together. Here in verse number 13, Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَةٌ فِي فِئَتَيْنِ الْتَقَتَى Indeed, there was a sign for you in the two armies that met in the battle. One fighting for the cause of Allah and the other in denial. They're disbelievers. The believers saw their enemy twice their number. But Allah supports 
with his victory, who he wills. Surely, and this is a lesson for people of insight. So that's the talk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us regarding the disbelievers and the non-believers and all that. Now he gives us a little bit of a taste of what we are living through today. And then he says in verse 14, Surah Ali Imran, which is Surah number 3, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ the enjoyment of worldly desires, women, children, treasures of gold and silver. And here, when it says children, having children as offsprings. The fine horses, the cattle, and the fertile land has been made appealing to people. That is the thing that appeals the eyes and that is the thing that people are after. The enjoyment of the worldly matter or the worldly desires. Women having wives, having children, having treasures of gold and silver, having fine horses, beautiful horses, having the cattle and the fertile land. All that has been made appealing to the people. These are the pleasures of this worldly life. But with Allah is the finest destination. Now, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows it with another beautiful ayah that has to do with the one before it, connected. Verse 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّن ذَلِكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّةٍ تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد Say O Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Shall I inform you of what is better than that? What is better than the worldly pleasures that we just talked about in the previous verse? Better than all of that. Those mindful of Allah will have gardens with their Lord under which rivers flow to stay there forever. and pure spouses along with Allah's pleasure and Allah is all seeing of his servants. Allah has given us an alternative to the, the worldly pleasures and the alternative is Jannatun Gardens Tajri min tahtiha al-anhar with rivers that flow under it, khalidina fiha, they stay in there forever and ever and ever, eternity. Wa azwaju mutahara, and pure spouses and wives, 
spouses in general, wives, husbands. وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ And the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah being pleased with us. And Allah is the all-seeing of His servants. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Which servants, O oh Allah, which servants are those? الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Those servants are who pray and say, Our Lord, we have believed, so forgive our sins and protect us from the torment of the fire. Those are the servants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. As-sabirina wal-sadiqina wal-qanitina wal-munfiqina wal-mustaghfirina bil-ashar. Five types. It is they who are patient, sincere, obedient, charitable, and who pray for forgiveness before dawn. And that is in the Fajr time. Praying for forgiveness and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. This is verse number 17 from Surah Ali Imran, which is number 3 from the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope you all benefited from this couple of minutes of reminder for me and yourself. Whoever's watching, whoever heard, whoever saw, whoever was with us. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. Inshallah, we will come back again, as promised, every day to go over either a verse from the Quran, a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or anything that has to do with our Islam, with our deen, something that would remind us, something that would get, that something that would boost our Iman. Because Iman could be boosted. And Iman floats up and down, up and down. So when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and talk to people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you boost that Iman. And if you are not talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not doing what you got to do, then the Iman will go down. And then what you got to do is come back and boost it up again, and come back and boost it up again. And that's how Iman is, and that's how we believe. Iman yazidu wa yanqus. Yazidu bil ta'at wa yanqus bil ma'asi. Iman um, can get boosted and can get raised by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being uh, a better servant. And it will decrease by doing whatever is opposite to that. Doing sins and staying away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so thank you all for being with us. And inshallah we'll see you next time by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the fifth day of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and our gathering, and our um, reciting the Quran, and, uh, and staying up all night, um, praying. And I'm going to tell you a quick um, working hard, a smarter but not harder tip, which is something that I was sharing with my kids the other day. Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, <clears throat> told us, whoever finishes a gathering and says, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta <coughs> Excuse me Whoever says Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka Whoever says that at the end of the gathering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will switch all his sins to good deeds Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So whatever sins you had before this, say this dua. And obviously this is for the minor sins, not for the kaba'ir. This is for the minor sins. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. 
Thank you for being with us again, and we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace.